There's a good chance at this point, if this is the first that you're hearing about this, you won't even know what I'm about to talk about because he deleted it. Yesterday, in a video titled, I worked for Mr. Beast, he's a thief, Ty Orr, the YouTube editor, makes the claim that the Mr. Beast company stole his idea for one of their YouTube videos. And I don't necessarily agree with him and I don't think his intentions are good. And overall, this thing just doesn't feel right. And I wanna talk about that. There's a very low chance that you haven't seen this video if you're watching this one. Uh, but in case you haven't, I'll put a link down in the description. But TLDR in like 10 seconds, Ty Orr was pulled into the Mr. Beast company for three days to work on creating ideas. He thinks his idea got ripped from him and then used in a future video. Most of the feelings that I'm getting from here and, and looking at this just logically, it doesn't feel like he had the best intentions in mind. I wanna go over a few of the claims he makes in the video and use some logic to kind of just, you know, really flesh out some of these points to see if they really make sense. And I got an email in which I thought was a scam. I mean, for real, look at this. Even you would think the same thing if you got a random email saying, Mr. Beast follow up, when you didn't even remember reaching out in the first place. So when I got this email, I decided to give it a chance. I responded in the email and then I proceeded to post a Facebook post because I was so happy. So let's just go over that in order. He receives an email asking to speak with him about a potential contract for a full-time you know, gig. He thinks it's a little suspicious because he didn't actually remember you know, submitting for this job. And then in the same day, he goes on to his Facebook and says, I got a job offer from Mr. Beast today. In my opinion, Ty has set his expectations way too high, way too quickly. Yes, they're trying to be exciting, but to some degree, you also need to recognize that the Mr. Beast company isn't just pulling people on and hiring them on the spot. What they do is so different than, you know, editing for sports gaming channels or, or sports channels in general. You gotta prove that you're able to do what they're doing or that, you know, you're actually providing something for them that they don't have. If they're reaching out to you and you're not even necessarily in the niche that they're in right now, what makes you think that they aren't reaching out to so many other people to try to do the same thing. So to just take this at face value as just a straight up job offer and not anything more than that, not, you know, like a, a test, I think he's putting the cart before the horse here. I bring this up because we need to keep in mind what people are thinking going into things like this. Because when he inevitably ends up not actually making the cut to get offered a job, it's gonna hurt him that much more when he already sets the precedent to himself and to other people around him, like on his personal Facebook, that he got the job offer immediately. And now everything past that is just a disappointment. And we're going to see that later. Just keep that in mind going forward. I don't want to waste your time here. I'm just giving you a quick 10 seconds. It would really mean a lot if you subscribe, if you like this content and other, you know, commentary drama that I will plan to be covering in the future. If you're not interested in subbing, I totally get it. And I just appreciate that you ended up watching my video. So thank you. I wanted to talk about this real quick because it just seems strange. And it's in regard to how he got like maybe tricked into signing an NDA. I've never once personally ever have ever signed an NDA in all my emails and all my correspondences and all my text messages I have never once ever signed an NDA but what I think they're what they're doing there is an iPad as soon as you get to the warehouse as soon as you walk in and you have to sign in and they ask you things like your first name last name email address all that phone number and stuff like that and I have a very 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 high suspicion that when you sign your name in there and you sign in I think you're also signing an NDA they don't come out and say it but I wouldn't be surprised if it happened that's just something that I think. If there's a lawyer watching this video, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it is in a company's best interest to secretly make you sign an NDA. Logically, as far as I understand it, they are making you sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, because they don't want you disclosing, you know, sensitive information. It makes no sense to me in any way, shape, or form for them to be trying to, like, secretly make people sign NDAs. Because what's the plan there? They're, you know, people are going public talking about things they didn't know was covered, only for the Mr. Mr. Beast team to turn around and like, you know, just sue the hell out of everybody. That doesn't track. That just makes them look bad. And the stream of revenue that they would get from a bunch of people breaking NDAs that they didn't know they agreed to would be pennies compared to literally any other stream of revenue that that company makes. And it also wouldn't outweigh the massive amounts of negative PR that they get from the creatives they're pulling on who likely have a social following who would likely then talk super poorly about the Mr. Beast company. It just doesn't really track in my head. And I, I struggle to believe that this was exactly exactly what happened. Maybe this is how he remembered it, or, or maybe it is exactly what happened, but just based off of looking at it objectively, this point just doesn't really add up. Right here, we're looking at, this is the most important part, it's just rooms. The two main things that I want you guys to focus on in that room ideas is American Ninja and the ropes course in sky. Those two that are near the top. I wanted to see how I can make a, an obstacle course with those floating blocks. I don't know how you would do it. Logistically, it's just not gonna work. So I came up with the idea with a trellis net, but like somehow incorporate it with the Mario idea. This is a picture 
picture that I drew for this pitch for this idea. Let's just talk about, you know, the, the crazy ingenuity that is this idea. Like I pointed out earlier, American Ninja Warrior was on that board. This obstacle course up in the air, it's going to be set up like the American Ninja Warrior stuff is with like, you know, wires coming down for the platforms, which is not a very original idea. It's already been done multiple times before. And to do, you know, these floating platforms that he's talking about and, and going, you know, focusing on this Mario idea and how he got it. As we're going through, okay, there's there's big open platforms between between the slats. And so, you know, they're, they're using harnesses to get around it. It's like, okay, yeah. Has anyone thought about what we'd do if we didn't have a harness on them, that we'd do a net underneath, which sounds cool. And that's why circuses do it. For trapeze artists, they have nets set up. My point with this is that like, maybe the collection of all three of these pieces, you know, the, the obstacles with the, you know, the slats, and then we're removing the harness, so we'll need a net. And you know, this kind of American Ninja style obstacle course, bringing all three of these concepts together is the original idea, for sure. Now question for you, the viewer. Do you think that the creator of this concept that we've just outlined is entitled to $1.7 million? Because if you did, Ty would agree with you. Here's why. The budget was a was originally 1.7 million. That intro alone cost 1.7 million dollars. Just the intro alone. And the reason why I didn't want to bring it up immediately was only because if the budget was 1.7 million and I'm here to prove myself, I can't start with going by over budget. Say, well, it, it would work because who they're gonna trust? You're gonna trust someone that works there for 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 months, or weeks, years? Or you're gonna check? Are you gonna trust some guy like me that just flew here a couple days ago? So there's that 1.7 million. That 1.7 million that would have been the entire budget for the video. Now, Ty himself says that that would have only been able to cover the intro, but he ends up agreeing that, yeah, 1.7 million for the entire video when he thinks that only would have been able to suffice for the intro. Now, initially, when the video was released, it had a GoFundMe link in the description. It's since been taken down because of all the backlash, but here it is. The fight against Mr. Beast and the wrongdoing of his company. The raised target of $1.7 million. If someone who has never been in production was, and I'm giving a benefit of the doubt here, was looking to, I don't know, create this obstacle course that he had the idea of, we already know that Ty doesn't think that $1.7 million would cover the intro, let alone the entire thing. And on the other side of the spectrum, the assumption is he's asking for $1.7 million because he thinks he's owed that from the Mr. Beast company. That seems a bit insane. I'm all for being negative about the Mr. Beast company. They have done a lot of things to be critical of, but to put a goal of $1.7 million, presumably for yourself in the description of a video where you are trying to, you know, talk badly about the Mr. Beast company seems like it's more so in your personal interest and personal gain. It doesn't seem like you're actually focused on, you know, exposing these issues and bringing it to light. It really more so seems like you're doing this for money. Now, at the very least, in Dogpack's two-part expose so far, he hasn't received presumably a dime from either of them since they're not monetized. And additionally, Jake Weddle, I don't believe, has monetized a video yet. In each description, it's linked for charities. They are making much more of an effort to make sure they're not doing this for money. And you show up and immediately are like, 1.7 million please go fund me. This kind of behavior very quickly muddles your intentions. And if you really think to a large degree that something like this, this 1.7 million was like genuinely deserved, I don't know that you would have taken it down, but you did. Additionally, and we do have to take this with a grain of salt, uh, from Drama Alert, yikes, uh, the Mr. Beast team, who more than likely lied about the dislikes, yikes, sent proof that they had a thumbnail idea for that uh, World's Deadliest Obstacle course way before this guy had shown up and given that idea. Most specifically, here is that one showing the, the rope thing that I was talking about earlier, and then the, you know, up in the sky obstacle course, kind of like those bridges that I talked about earlier. So just to overview my thoughts about this, Ty showed up expecting that he already had a job, as he proved with his earlier, you know, Facebook posts and whatnot, went through the vibe check, and if we take those renderings of the Mr. Beast thumbnails from before he had his idea, he presented some frankly unoriginal ideas to the team, at least unoriginal to their headspace. But at the end of the day, because of this GoFundMe, because of how he did frame this and set it up, this comes off very vindictive and spiteful and more about his own personal gain in this situation than it does to actually get information out to warn other creators. He just kind of bragged about what he thought was a good idea and feels wronged because he didn't get, you know, to be a part of bringing that idea to fruition, even though he was just working on it creatively when it's already been in the headspace for quite some time before he showed up. I could be wrong about that. I'd like to see some of the points that you guys make. Again, I don't think the Mr. Beast company is, is great by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think that everything they did in this 
this situation was okay or a nice thing to do, but to turn this around and frame it so that you feel in some way you're entitled to $1.7 million, I don't know, man. If you want money, just own it, man. Like me, please, someone give me a sponsor. Not feasible though, yucky. It's very easy to jump on the hate Mr. Beast company train, but this kind of stuff for me is what ends up discrediting other people that come forward when you try to do this from what appears to be your own personal gain. If more info comes out and I'm wrong, I'll apologize, absolutely, but I just, this feels weird. Last but not least, a shout out to all my members, and I will be doing it in Gilbert Gottfried's voice. Enjoy. Special thank you to Zakia, Not Ninjas, Pork and BR, Win VR, Psych Xander, Case Blue, Lego Golden Freezer, Spacebar Too Loud, Fammy, LDG, Hashtag Free the Net, Noah Brown, Naomi Jimenez, Sundasphere, Frosty, Tommy C's Cat, I'm falling out of it, Eric Hatful, Captain Spud, Orange Cat Pianist, Amp40, PB with K, Bib Jim, Alex, The Sand Dog, Rain the Once, Yes, um, oh, let's talk. Basically, bricks. Cooking with silence. Logan. Kate Munster. <laughs> Kawaii Chan GD. What does Gilbert Gottfried sound like? Why did I forget what Gilbert sounds like? Duck Astley. Mr. Wu. Owen Murnane. Jackson Dutton. Nost ABI. Saya Sneaker. For all yawn kind. Esme Smiley Face. Ogie's JK. For Ife, Ionut, Titanium Sid, Kate's Mom, Bosu, Raven Rio 755, My Mom, Quintio's Brother, Sorry. Uh, next one, Shaggy, Mickey Mouse, or, uh, or Pitbull. You guys, you guys pick. I should have drank water before that. Okay, see ya. Bye, bye. Adios. Hey.